Welcome once again to the 2016 Nokian Tires World Orienteering Championships, hosted this year in the magnificent west coast of Sweden, starting in the beautiful city of Stromstad. I'm Hugh Dan McLennan, alongside me, Catherine Bett, here on the IOF Live Centre Transmission. We'll be guiding you through the rest of the week's competition. It promises to be wild, open and challenging. Today's event, it's the sprint really, 31 teams, women, men, men and women as they take off through the magnificent scenery of this area of the west coast of Sweden where tourism dominates the iconic scenery, the Koster Islands to the west, Sweden's most westerly point, the Marine National Park. We're 510 kilometres from Stockholm, 160 kilometres from Gothenburg. It's a magnificent setting for one of the best sports in the world. And who could argue with this scenery and the potential for one of the great competitions of this World Championship, the second day of this year's events here in Stromstad, in Tannum midweek, and then back in Stromstad, where you'll rejoin us later, I hope. It promises to be quite a week. And here's the setting. This is the setting in Stromstad. The weather conditions are absolutely fantastic. 19 degrees, Catherine, but it feels warmer, to be honest. Oh, it definitely feels warmer out in the sunshine. I had a quick walk around the arena earlier, and there are lots of people out sunbathing. It's brilliant. There's no danger of any of the athletes getting, uh, getting cold when they're waiting for the incoming runners in the arena. Very little chance, we hope that we uh, don't have the rain we had at the end of the competitions yesterday. It looks as if we'll be home and dry. It does indeed, absolutely. A few clouds on the in the horizon, but nothing really. And I think they've dismantled one of the bridges we had yesterday, so the runners are going to face one less obstacle, one fewer obstacle than yesterday. But um, this weather is making it absolutely brilliant for spectating. The women will run 3.4 kilometres, the men run 3.7 kilometres. There are 14 controls for the women, 17 for the men, and we anticipate a winning time of round about 13 minutes. But uh, the course is going to be run over a very different area around Stromstad from yesterday, Catherine. Yeah, we can take a look at the map. They'll run out of the assembly area towards the north and then are faced immediately with with uh, an incredibly long leg, and especially for a, a sprint course. So they've got to ha make a decision very, very quickly. Of course, they've got to go to the start control, no cutting through beforehand. And then a face with a, with a couple of things. And you actually can't see this um, on the screen here, but some of the areas have been taped off, making it much more difficult to go between controls two and three. You can see the gaffling there. The athletes will be split up. They will, be, they will have a map just with one route on it. So they have to go to all of the controls on them. It will split the pack up. But means that after the whole thing, everyone will have visited, all the teams will have visited all the same controls. Here we can see the differences between the uh, men's and the women's course. The women's is in blue, the men's still in the orienteering purple. So they have a slightly a slight extra loop after they come through the arena and change over their map for the, the first time into and finally into the finish. So basically they don't all run in the same order, but they end up in the same place. And it's, uh, as I said earlier, women first, then a man, then a man, and finally the final fourth leg is the uh, second woman. And it's a mass start, which makes it uh, quite interesting, to put it mildly. Yeah, they've got a long um, run into the start control, so we'll see a lot of bunching there. But now we're going to look at s and see what it's like out on the course. This is from the start, the first... Uh, Control is going to have a lot of route choice, and it's we're going to have a TV spot of that control. It's going to be interesting to see which direction they approach it from, which angle they took, and we'll also get the GPS tracking on here as well. But it's going to be a lot of decisions going to have to be made right at the beginning to decide particularly from this point, whether the, they stay along the flat and, and do the climb later, or they could take the left turning and build the height first and then stay along the top. But here we've decided to go 
in the big wide open roads where there should be lots of easy running is much simpler than taking the left and heading along the bottom before making the climb a bit later. So there are choices and these are big decisions but we'll see the runners because of the different mapping we'll see them taking these decisions in, in a different order and the whole point of it is that they come together at the end. They're numbered in the order in which they finished last year and we have the defending champions as number one Denmark. They're bound to be amongst the favourites and they, they just looked so strong yesterday, particular Maja Am who won the uh, lady sprint. That must give them some confidence coming in, but it's by no means a straight run. Oh, definitely not. I mean, my arm will have a lot of confidence, and especially the team, and especially because they are defending world champions. But I mean, you've definitely got to put the Swiss up there. They've had absolutely great form. Uh, they they won the World Cup race in Poland, and they've, they've got a slightly different team, um, but they are, especially considering their results from yesterday, there's two... Um, two silvers and a bronze, uh, three medals definitely. Um, they are going to be very, very strong, and of course, you can never count out the Swedes. On but the, the, this kind of terrain will suit uh, certainly the runners who ran in the early stages yesterday. Will find the dry, hard, open road a, a surface they're familiar with now, obviously, and they will be comfortable on it. Yeah, and some sections of the map they're going to from yesterday as well. So people who've already experienced that will have an advantage. They'll recognise places that they've seen before, but all of the athletes will have had the the maps from yesterday that they would have been able to study and they know what it's like. Well, there are some views and there are other views, but um, there was an 81 second winning margin last year. Some of these route choices seem to suggest to me it would be very difficult to, to open up a lead of 81 seconds to, to win a, yeah. a championship we'll like this. We'll see a lot of, we'll see everyone pretty much coming in the same way the first at the same time on the first leg, nothing different. See, this is where we've got a good difference of route choice. It's actually significantly quicker to, to take the higher route, go up first and then see that. And this one is also going to offer a lot of route choice. I think they're missing one there, going right through the middle of all the rock. Uh, these, all these athletes are used to running in in the forest and things like that. They'll be there will be absolutely fine with just going straight through and not even seeing that as an obstacle. So the bare rock will be easier to deal with because it's dry, basically. Yeah, well, it, it won't. It might be slightly slippy or, or, or slightly steeper. That might um, give. I think it's the steepness that will cause the problem if there is any. But um, they'll just treat it as another hard surface, and they will be very confident just going through that, going through the contours there. It'll be very easy. This is the numbering for the start list: the one, two, three from last year in the championships in Scotland, reflected with Denmark, Norway, and Russia being the one, two, three, the mass start, as I said. We have 31 teams in all. We have no team from Egypt, although it was uh, on the list at one point, so there will be no number 29. Great Britain there at number 14. Uh, the United States in the middle of the uh, bunch towards the end of the uh, numbering. And as I said, no number 29, which would have been Egypt, but they're not here. So a wonderful atmosphere around the stadium. So very different from yesterday, I think, because it's a team event. It's much more of uh, pe people supporting teams rather than the individuals, although the team aspect yesterday was significant as well. Yeah, I think they, we can see a lot of team flags out there, lots of different countries' flags. They've all brought them down, especially as we look at the start, all the maps lined up that the athletes will pick up uh, on the starters' orders. And here we can see the group of women who've come down from quarantine uh, all ready to set off in a couple of minutes' time. So if you talk us through the process that they're undergoing now from here, what they have to do? OK, so they're just about to go and line up at the start. All the, all the top seeds, so the p people with the lowest numbers, the fastest people from last year, they are starting on the front row. They're going to find their number and find their map. There we can see one, two, three, four, five lining up right at the start. They'll have the advantage going off first. So when they're about to start, a couple of seconds to go, they will crouch down and, and take hold of their maps. And when the final start actually goes, they will pick their maps up and just start running. And the start will be by a shot. So there'll be no dubiety. The runners are in place and ready to go. We estimate, as I said, around about 13 minutes in all. But there will be chopping and changing. The positions will change with the women, the men catching each other up and then losing places. Here we go. As they pick up their maps ready for the start. Three, 
Hey. Eventually, the shot is given, and we're underway, and the mass start. Always a significant feature. You can see them, they're all looking at their maps. They've all trying to make the different routes in their head that they think of. Now they've all done what we've expected and gone through to the start control. That is good. No one's um, decided to go back on themselves. So everyone's safely through the start. They're all off and running. Some taking more time to adjust to the mapping than others. And up front, we've got uh, number four, the Swiss making the early pace, followed by number three, the Russian Federation. And we've also got uh, Cecilia Klusner in there from Denmark. Yeah, we can see her on the left running very well. And they're all very, very close at the moment. A very similar style to uh, Maya Alm. Very economical style. We also have Poland up at the front there, as well as uh, the Swedish runners. They're still in contention. 28 Belarus are also up there. So Again, we'll, it's very, very close. It'll begin to uh, pan out because the faster runners at the start are significantly faster than the lower order numbers. And they all seem to have taken the, the same route as we saw the GoPro runner, GoPro runner take earlier, which is the bottom route. Yeah, we can see this on the GPS now. They've all taken the bottom route, which is not actually the shortest. But just to make sure that you've got simply and quickly and easily into number one. They've, um, they've all pretty much decided to go the same way, although Finland and Denmark and France taking uh, routes even further along the bottom before deciding to cut up slightly later. The positions on the top left of your screen are the current positions as they're running. Denmark leading from Norway, Russia, Switzerland, Sweden, Finland, and then France in seventh place at the moment as they Head Although they're, I think they're just there, they're the numbers from uh, their positions yeah. from last year. Yeah. So it's difficult to tell who's leading at the moment as they all take their different routes. But certainly Norway and Sweden taking a route that we, were, we weren't thinking that was going to be one of the quickest ones. And they're the choices they're having to make. Two quite different routes and uh, quite a distance. Is it unusual to have to go this far to the first point? Um, Probably for a, for a sprint, for a sprint relay, definitely. It's a long control, but it's definitely a good tactic, I think, from the planners. It's going to split them up early. It's forced them to make different decisions. I think it's quite um, a brave thing to do to actually def go away from the pack and choose a different decision. That's why we've seen most of them sticking together. The Polish runner, Ivina Wiczka is leading the pack of four and there Denmark taking a different route Kleisner goes to the right and other runners break off to follow her down so in that pack at the front we've got Poland Russia Hungary Denmark followed by Switzerland and Canada and Sweden but there's so little between them now and these positions will change as the uh, runners hand over and there the Irish runner followed by Turkey and Japan, some of the lower order runners already finding it difficult to maintain the pace. The heat will be an issue as the race goes on. And now we can see on the map here, we've got some of the sections have been taped off, made out of bounds so that they get, it's forcing the runners to run around some of these buildings, just making the, the terrain a bit trickier than it would ordinarily have been. And the time in the bottom right-hand corner is the time from departure, so they're four minutes into the race now. And we can also see how some of the gaffling is taking place, going to either of the controls, number uh, control twos. And for those of you perhaps not as familiar with the term gaffling, Catherine's going to explain it in words of one syllable. <laughs> Uh, I can't, I'm not sure I can do one syllable. I think I've already gone over that. But so it's where you'll have the courses will have some controls. They will go to the same control and some controls. There will be a choice, meaning that it splits the athletes up, forces them to go. So that means they can't follow each other. But where one athlete will take control A of 2A or 2B, the the athlete later on will take 2B, meaning overall, after everyone has run, they will all have gone, all the teams will have gone to all of the same controls. So it does even out over the piece, so it makes it quite difficult to keep track sometimes of the actual positions and the, the leading runners because they're just doing it in a different order. But um, the whole point is that it balances out and it should produce a finish. But uh, Natalia Gempela in first, 
with Russia. That's a very strong run from her, followed by Klusner of Denmark. And then Vicha of Poland and Strand of Sweden. But uh, there you see the, the first three or four runners are opening up a gap. The gap between them is not that much, but then they're beginning to shake off some of the runners behind them. Now we come to the, the big route choice leg of whether they're going round or straight through some of these um, some of this rocky bit. There's a little path through the terrain there that I think they've picked up and they're going over the top of some of the rocky areas now. They've definitely picked up a small track that's gone through there and it just makes the running and the navigation slightly simpler as the Russian athlete takes a slightly different route through the terrain trying to head further towards the left to um, to go get back into the housing but she hasn't made up any time on the other two on that leg the three runners still in a group the climb the women have a climb of uh, 70 meters over the piece there the run the numbering and the times uh, just under a second in the lead russia from denmark poland sweden latvia estonia and then further down already, a significant gap opening to the 20th position there. At Australia are nearly 30 seconds adrift at this stage. So here we can see the leaders doing their route choice through this more technical part. Less typically a sprint area, but they've all just chosen to go on the northern route. No one going really going straight through yet. And particularly Sweden and Denmark evidently heading to control six which is the further south of the two that might be a shorter leg overall gonna put them out in the lead and it looks like the Swedish runner Nina Strand is closest to the finish at the moment we'll pick up another radio control at control number nine to give you an indication of where they are just before they come through the arena and we'll pick them up on the, the TV cameras again quite a significant group there managing to uh, keep themselves ahead but uh, the leading group are doing well to stick together probably and that might help them in the uh, warm conditions as they come to the handover and it is Lena Strand in first followed by Cecilia Klusner of Denmark and then Natalia Gampela of Russia and finally Rahel Friedrich pulling up a lot actually from Switzerland she wasn't in the first group at the beginning and here's the Polish runner. There was a great cheer from the crowd as they saw the uh, Swedish runner come through that first. And there will be again as they see her come down the steps as we get our third split point just before they come into the arena. It's not much. It's not a huge gap at this stage, but there's a big hand as she comes in. Range of the arena has... Uh, woken up and the flags, all manner of flags I have to say, here they come past us in the arena sweeping past us no more than 100 metres cover the first four or five runners as they pass us there as and that's a definite through. group before we have a gap after the Swiss runner, and they head off back basically to where they started from over the bridge negotiating that, much easier to do that when the conditions are dry and good underfoot and then a larger, much larger pack picking up the pace afterwards where they've settled into almost a race within a race but now there's a, a just a bit of a break developing there between the, uh, the faster runners and the tail enders just going through Ukraine the Czech Republic Germany still passing us here, Bulgaria the USA and Australia. This is actually very interesting because Denmark has, um, has taken, Klusner has taken the possibly longer route going around the left-hand side of the building. There's not too much in it, but I think she may lose some time from that decision. The defending champions. But this, this route choice certainly has split them up. Uh, we've got Sweden and Switzerland both going on one way and I think I think Alina Strand is looking really really great to get to that control first and here's Kleisner closely followed by Gimperly Natalia Gimperly from the Russian Federation and still the runners passes the Italian runner just going through the arena this control number 10 there are two possible controls to go to go through so we won't see all the runners past this point as we see uh, charlotte ward who decided uh, not to run the sprint final yesterday she was going to rest and recover 
specifically for this sprint relay. So Britain getting hopes of getting on the podium for that. Uh, Denmark relying heavily on the, the consistency of selection. We've just seen them do uh, quite well. The World Cup, the Swiss in Poland in April were first, Sweden second, Denmark third. The European Championships then, Russia won that, Denmark second, Switzerland third. But this is a different ball game altogether. Here we can see we miss Lena Strand going through that control ahead of uh, Klusner from Denmark. So she's definitely ahead as we as they head back into kind of more of the park areas of Strömstad. And the, the crowd in front of us shielding their eyes, watching all the action on the, the big screen in the arena. Glorious afternoon here on the west coast of Sweden. huge support for the home team but there you see the flags of all countries there are people here from supporting all the teams running some people better than others at getting their control for control flow as we see the men waiting at the assembly area this is the uh, scene as they await the handover it should be in about uh, I reckon two minutes or thereabouts and we have another split from in the terrain and it, Sweden no longer have the lead. It is Russia first, followed by Denmark and then Sweden. Natalia, and finally we have Switzerland going through just in shot there. Natalia Gemperle is the leading runner for the Russian Federation. She'll hand over, is due to hand over to Artem Popov. She did, she, yeah, she's had a great run. Uh, the Russians have put their strongest runners out last and she did not compete yesterday. So they've evidently got fresh legs, but not the experience of running in the terrain as again, Russia and Denmark go different ways just around here. There are two uh, in the Russian team who ran yesterday, Andrei Khramov and Galina Vinogradova who will take the team home. So that could count. Three runners yesterday ran for Denmark. Tui Lassen, who's going to Pick up, Soren Bobach, Maya Alm. Oh, change of mind, back they go once they come to the control there. And that was Russia and Finn, uh, Russia and Sweden, just followed by Denmark and then again Switzerland. They're still very, very close together despite taking those two different routes there. And they all come into the finish pretty much together. A bit of a gap towards, towards Rahel Friedrich from Switzerland. And the crowd in the arena have sensed that they're just about with us because that's the corner just round us, the volume cranking up a notch or two here. They come just past us now, and it's uh, Lena Strand leading the field from Natalia Gemperle. As they go round to pick up their maps, hand over to their colleagues. Lena Strand handing over to Gustav Bergman, Natalia Gemperle over to Artem Popov, Cecilia Klesner over to Tua Larsen, and finally, Rahel Friedrich over to Florian Howald. Smooth enough changeover so far. So Sweden lead, Denmark, Switzerland, Finland, Poland. And over the first six places, there's a 22 second gap. But all these positions and timings will change as we go through this. The exhaustion, they've given it everything. The leading pack have acquitted themselves really well in the heat. Great Britain there, handing over to Peter Hodkinson, one of the team that won gold at the World University Orienteering Champs a couple of weeks ago. Robert Merle has taken off for Austria there, number nine. And then there's the French runner, Frédéric Tranchon, who fe featured from time to time yesterday in the uh, sprint. And some of the lower numbers now coming through, the Spanish handover. German runner, number 23, Soren Riekers is away. And here we have the... This is a little replay of replay. the first leg. Norway seems to struggle going through all of those little gaps, not taking a simplest route. So the standing at the first exchange, the leaders are Sweden, 
13.25, and then not much of a gap between the first three, and then a significant gap opening up Switzerland, 11 seconds off the pace, and then the gap pretty quickly up to ninth there, Great Britain, and then the lower orders, some there, Spain, break the minute, they're a minute behind at that stage. But these gaps are only going to get wider as Russia, the Russian athlete, Artem Popov takes the higher route, the one that we know to be slightly shorter, but perhaps slightly more complicated. He may catch up a bit of time on both Denmark and Sweden, who look to be running together, followed closely by Switzerland. So almost two distinct races going on there. It's quite a difference in terms of the uh, strategy being taken. And Topi Reitinen looks like he did something there, uh, trying to get up by one of the car parks uh, before realizing that was not the best route choice and just heading, powering through the rest of it. And now we can try and catch them on our first control, who's taking the best route, and it's still Sweden in the lead. Sweden Bergman leading from Lassen. Tui Lassen in second place. But Popov seems to have lost some time. Only a few seconds, but slightly on that decision to go on the high route. So, uh, no difference between Howalt of Switzerland and Popov there. The timing almost, well, it is identical, but that leading group has certainly put down their marker now. Yeah, I think that's grown up to a significant gap. But good work from Peter Hulkinson, who's caught some time up now in six. So all the athletes, are, they're not using Sport Ident touch-free system as they were last year. They're using a, an EMIT system, but it's, a, it's the same principle. They just need to um, brush past the unit on the top of the control, and it will flash and record their time. It allows for very, very quick transitions and flow through the controls. No need to worrying about stopping and punching. So some uh, variation in route choice here. Yeah, this, the Swiss runner had the control number two on to the right, so he's able to take a different route choice going into control number three. The gaff will split them up again, as we still see Gustav Bergman in the lead. Containing the pace to Elassen. He's uh, not allowing a gap to develop. To Elassen will be probably slightly disappointed at his Result from yesterday, he qualified first in um, in one of the, the heats, but um, was not quite as good on the actual final. Just waiting for the runners coming through. That's how close they are. Five and one. Five is Gustav Bergman of Sweden, and one is Tui Lassen of Denmark. They seem to have created a gap now to Florian Howell, not the strongest runner from the, the Swiss team, but they still have the, a great rest of their team who can surely bring it back with Martin Hoodman and on the last leg, Ju uh, Judith Vida. Does this strike you as a deliberate break to try and, and get away, or is it just that they're faster? Are, are they trying deliberately to open that gap now? To well, shake they'll up? always be trying to open up a gap, but um, they're probably not thinking too much about the other runners. They're just mainly trying to concentrate on their own race, which is what they will be doing, and gaps will just open up where they open up. As you see, uh, Great Britain, Hungary, and Finland through on the left-hand side of the screen into control number five on their course. Cutting through the buildings. Bergman still leading. We've just seen the uh, New Zealand runner, the first New Zealand runner has just gone through. And this is their splits from the first part of the race. So we can see um, Florian Howells from Switzerland actually had the best split on that joint equal uh, with the French runner. And so some of the faster runners, the ones we expect to, to be in the lead overall, not quite as quick on that first um, exchange from um, the handover to their first radio control. They're the farthest point away from where we are here, a replay of the turn back, as it were, towards us. 
everyone choosing to pick up that track and going over the bare bit of rock. I think they're trying to play it safe, actually, and, and use that track to get the, um, the entrance into the terrain. Tui Lassen appears to have edged ahead of uh, Gustav Bergman now. It's interesting, the crowd lifting the Swedish runner. And here's the third place. From Russia. Popov. Then uh, how how well do uh, well we pick up the action at the front because that's where the real action is now. Bergman looks like he's he's saving himself a bit. He's not quite going as hard. He knows he's still a, a lot of the course left to run. But the Danish flags are waving in front of our position in our commentary tent as Tua Lassen comes through the run through in first place. And there's the Swedish runner coming in. They've just passed us there. Bergman does look like he's taking it quite easy. He's not in any sort of rush now. He, he knows he needs to control his speed to make sure he doesn't run too fast with his navigation. The Swiss runner has gone through. How old? Now this is the, maybe some of the inexperience of the Russian uh, Artem Popov showing. Eleven is uh, the Polish runner Pavlak. Here now a group coming in. Number six, the Finnish runner Toby Reitinen, and number nine, Robert Merle, who featured strongly yesterday at one point, and Britain going through there also. A big group now. The men have bunched up together, but up at the front. It's number one. And where is Gustav Bergman? There he is coming yep. down the slope. He's Different. using the <laughs> lamppost to swing himself around, not having to slow down there. But Tuolasen's definitely taken more out of um, more out of Gustav Bergman just on that little stretch there. And then Howald turns. He's beginning to drop off the pace, I suspect there, Howald. All of the runners choosing to go down the, the direct route on the slope, but also the slope's going to be much quicker than stepping on all the steps going down the stairs. Using every piece of their intuition as they come to these obstacles. And here's a change. There's a completely different direction here for Tronchon. He's the first one to approach, although he's being followed by others. The different routes becoming apparent, the Polish runner, and then number 15 is the Estonian, Kenny Kivikas. So all of the men having that control number 10 before they head off into the open rock part of the course where they will, which is the extra part of the course compared to the women's, which adds a bit of distance and a bit of time. But what's happening to the Russian athletes? What's happening to Popov? Well, he seems to have gone. He's, well, if the tracking, yeah, he's obviously realised now we picked him up in the he took GPS. the left fork and then instead of the right fork in the track and realised that eventually, then that's going to lose him a lot of time. He had to backtrack completely, so that could cost him dearly. But it's still to a lesson. He was 16th yesterday, possibly slightly disappointing for him but making amends here today with an increasing lead over Gustav Bergman in second. Now the downhill momentum he'll pick up here. We'll push him forward, there's the gap, because that's Bergman taking off down the hill after him. But Bergman not looking certain in this terrain. He had to have a, a quick look of his map there on the way out of that control. None of the others were doing that. Howell does have a check of the, the emits on his wrist are flashing, but not a look at the map there. He knew exactly where he was going. So all these seconds vital. Over 17 controls for the men. If you lose two or three seconds at each control, you soon stack up. And here he comes, Lassen. And how here we see that the, the French runners caught up and overtaken Popov because of his mistake earlier on in the course, just after coming through the spectator area. Hey, 
Gustav Bergman is getting support from the crowd throughout this course. He's not, he doesn't seem to be able to respond though. He's still running at the same pace. He doesn't seem to have an extra gear that's propelling him forward. He still looks uncertain. How well they are going through. And here we can see the gaps as they go on the last few controls before they approach the finishing area. Denmark with a huge lead over Sweden, Switzerland and France, the first four, but they're still, they're quite separated at the moment. Though perhaps Gustav Bergman just wants to be solid. He knows he could potentially have a big mess up and he just wants to hand it over to the next runner in a solid position. He'll hand over to Jonas Leanderson, fifth yesterday and former world champion in the individual sprint. Here they come, heading for the changeover. The crowd in the arena have picked him up. And then we're going to another male runner. And uh, Denmark will hand over to Soren Bobach. Tua Lassen said he's had strong training this year, claiming he's only missed about four or five days of training due to any sort of illness or injury. So he looked, and it looked like that has paid off, as he looked incredibly strong. And there's uh, Bergman going through, passed us uh, round the last corner to the handover, picks his map. And he releases Lee Anderson, the 2015 sprint champion. And then uh, Martin Hubman has taken up the challenge for Switzerland. The Hubman name. Hubman was ninth yesterday. A solid, solid run. Hopefully he'll still have things left in his legs. I think the New Zealand team have picked up a good bit of uh, Oh, I think that was them just going through the, uh, the, through first, the yeah. first spectator loop. Here's the French runner, Frédéric Tronchon, looking to hand over to Luca Basse. In fourth place, the French. And the Finland runner looks ready to accept a map from his teammate as well. 17. Chris Jones is also waiting for his runner. 17 were the Spaniards. And there, the British runner is off and running. The runners there just absolutely exhausted, having to complete their technical changes at the end as we still see the runners trooping through. Coming to the maps, 22 is the Canadian runner. Will Critchley sets off. The Czech team are quite far down. They performed excellently in this year's European Championships, of course, run in their home country. So maybe having a bit bit more trouble this, this time round. And it looks like Soren Bobak is extending his lead. Possibly um, Jonas Anderson being caught a tiny bit by Martin Hubman there. And now he's on the flat, you can see that that speed really takes advantage as his GPS tracker suddenly goes much quicker. You will also see Bobach, and you'll know exactly how much of a gap there is. Remember, the uh, fourth legs are run by the women to take them home, and uh, Denmark have yesterday's champion, Maria Alm, waiting. The uh, Swiss team have Judith Wieder, who was second yesterday, so it's all building up into almost a repeat challenge. As we see Søren Bobak come through, but um, but Jonas Leanderson is not far behind. You can see him coming into the tunnel already. And that kind of distance is uh, certainly retrievable. It's an eight second margin at the moment at split one. He's already caught up five seconds from the changeover, has Jonas the Anderson on Sir and Bobak. So the, the Swedes are clawing it back. Well, there's still a lot of running to be done before this is done and dusted. This is the standing at exchange to Denmark, lead Sweden, Switzerland, France, Finland, Spain, Austria. A group there bunched together, three of them, Russia, Latvia and Great Britain in the top 10. And then the gaps widen significantly from a minute at the 11th place to two and a half, three minutes, just 10 places down. 
but Luca Basse looks like he's being caught for fourth place by some of the runners from Finland. And Great Britain are there too. Chris Jones has already caught up some time. He changed over in 10th place, but now up to sixth. Chris Jones winning the gold medal from the World University Championships. He'll be looking to take the team into a better position. And he certainly did well yesterday, improving significantly on his place in the 2015 Championships. So that will have given him heart. The question is, how much is it taken out of his legs to get round? So just a sense that the gap in the first three is narrowing, certainly in the first two. But, um, it's not, uh, it's not an unbeatable margin at this stage. Certainly not with the class of runner still to come. And they come round to punching control number five. We can get a new split to see if, see if Jonas Anderson has caught up any time on any more time on Sir and Bowback. Well, it was eight seconds. It's down. It is. It is closing. That looks. That looks as if it's closed significantly now, and if he was to do that again before the end of the leg, well, we would have a race in our hands, for sure. Hoopman, 17 seconds adrift. There's a great shot of the... Uh, Hoopman's also caught up some time at the first uh, split on his leg. He was 21 seconds behind, so caught up four seconds there. Maybe Surin's just not quite got the speed. He's a very, very solid orienteer and someone from obviously a well-known family in orienteering, but um, maybe not quite the speed as, as well. And, it, and it's difficult for him to run. He's, he's got a leader out. The others, they can all see him. They can all chase him. He's got no one ahead. That's got, it's got to be harder to run that way. As uh, Chris Jones pulls him up into fourth place, that's a great leg from from Jones. We've just been told that Russia have been disqualified, apparently. So that's taken them out of the equation. And uh, we'll maybe find out more about that. But that seems to be uh, certainly one out of the uh, leading places that we don't need to worry about at the moment. Because it's... Uh, Beginning to heat up nicely at the beginning. The Spaniards have also pulled up a lot from on their second leg. They finished in 14th on the first after the first leg, but have pulled up into sixth place now. The Spanish team had a great set of qualifications for the sprint final, and now we can see how they've gone through the kind of interesting route choice leg. Denmark taking it, going pretty much straight through, like we thought some people might. But Jonas Leanderson looks like he's taken up, gone the long way around, but he knows he can be quicker on that. And Chris Jones has taken the route that we saw most of the women and most of the second leg runners go, and he's also caught up a lot of time there. He looks that as it. He has the pace. He certainly has the pace to make Ooh, up. Oh, the and they approach from the different directions, yep. and they're pretty much oh. exactly the same. Sarah and Bobak and Jonas Leanderson. They could have shaken hands. <laughs> it's the last thing in their mind, but they were there in a split second between them. Running together, he's caught up all of it, and here is Martin Hoopman joining them. Hoopman can certainly make up that ground, but it, it might be easier for the two of them in the lead to edge forward together. And now there's nothing between them as they come into the arena. Here they come into the arena. There is absolutely nothing between them as they hand over to Maya Alm for Denmark, and then Judith Wieder will take up for Switzerland. Uh, they've still got another loop to run, though, yeah. before they actually do any handing over. So they're still running together. We'll see whether the next time they come through the arena they will be together or not. And Martin Hoopman following them. The crowd know that that's what, what they're teeing it up for. Although Hoopman not looking quite as strong as we see Chris Jones coming through in fourth place with nobody behind them. Well, there's He's another gonna, gap there. He's going to be handing over to Kat Taylor at the end of his leg, a very, very strong runner. If she has a good race, she could very well challenge for a medal. So there's a significant gap there between Hoopman and Jones, and then Bostrom. Jones seems to have a fairly comfortable advantage at this stage. Bassey then a minute off the pace in sixth place at split three. And Blaine's the Spaniard, the Latvian Pollens. We can see the Russia running there wearing uh, number three. We've heard that the Russian team have been disqualified. We should bring you more on that, tidy it up when we get more news on their disqualification. 
Here they come, having a good look at the map as they go through. And up in the leading charge. Inches between them now. It's all going to be down to the very final stages. This will go to the wire, I suspect. Well, that was Martin Hoobman. So we've, uh, we've missed the Swedes and the Danes going through. So we don't know quite who's got ahead. After well, they the were together. Over. Just caught them going caught over them the, going through that tree. They were absolutely almost stride for stride. Nothing between them at this stage. It'll be as much a, a mental challenge, I suspect. There's Chris Jones. So there's the uh, wider picture, if you want. This huge battle at the front between Denmark and Sweden. They're staying together, with Denmark possibly slightly in front. So Søren Boback hasn't let Jonas Lee Anderson out of his sights. As they take a take an interesting route, starting further down before heading up the hill, then maybe continuing on the flat before they get. Uh, our information is that Russia are back in the competition, so that will resolve itself in due course. But they are still running. Uh, they're a good bit off the pace at the moment, but Great Britain taking a much wider route there. That they will come together. And here we can see how Sweden and Denmark have got different controls. Jonas Landersen heading in for the southernmost control and Søren Boback heading for the other one. That may split them up, who they've been running together for a long time. Lee Anderson looks like he's edging ahead now. Here's Boback. This doesn't seem to have that pace. Ten seconds adrift on that clock. As Lee Anderson has upped the pace and Hoopman looks, if anything, to be his 19 seconds off. But Sir and Boback has, has lost 10 seconds on that time. It may have been the gaffle. He may have had a, like, a slightly longer con uh, control that will resolve itself eventually after all of four runners have been out. But he certainly lost some time on that one. Portuguese runner just going past us. Still the runners, the lower order, the Australian passing us through the arena here. Here comes Lee Anderson, going well. He's maintained his rhythm all the time. If anything, I would say he's just got that little bit quicker. And as Bobach, with his economic style, is finding the going tough. And this is where possibly Lee Anderson will have an advantage as they return into the terrain that they were in yesterday. It's a control, if not in the same place, it's a similar place that, that they were running yesterday. So he may well have the advantage, and he knows that the finish is close in sight. It'll be just that little bit of a sense of familiarity as he goes down some of the slopes. He'll know where he's heading. And it might aid his decision-making. Here's Jones. Here's Lee Anderson now, striding purposefully towards the control, and then heading back towards the harbour. Jonas Anderson doesn't look like he's made any of the mistakes that we had. We saw him make yesterday. Dithering coming out of an alleyway, wanting to turn left or right, not really knowing what to do. Now he looks like he's striding with confidence. Checks his light. He knows he's opened up a gap. He's uh, comfortable doing that. Driving towards the line now. This is a good finish. Maintained his pace, as I said, through the second, third. And then he's added a notch or two. And he's handing over to Helena Janssen. And here's Bobach coming in. And we'll see just what the gap is for the sprint champion from yesterday. He's waiting there. 12 seconds she has to make up if she's to get her second gold medal in 24 hours. Meanwhile, the Swiss runners ready to change. Martin Hoogman will hand over to Judith Vida. And Kat Taylor waiting on the line there for Chris Jones. Off she goes. Kat Taylor also didn't run yesterday. She's got fresh legs, hoping to join the team to pull them up possibly into a medal. You know, they were possibly closing on Martin Hoogman, but 
Now we've got Judith Bieder, the silver medalist from yesterday, to chase. Great Britain in fourth place, 37 seconds off the pace. Denmark just 12 seconds adrift of Sweden. Switzerland then follow in 30 seconds. Judith Bieder has got a big, big gap to make up. Second yesterday. But those top four certainly uh, in a commanding lead ahead of the next group. It looks at this stage as if the medals will go to the top four. They would be the favourites at this stage. And they're the lower order places now coming in. Norway down on their second place finish from last year. And that's, but if anyone can claw some time back, it's going to be Anna Margarita Hauskin Norgeberg. Well, she's got a massive amount of time to make up now. And here we can see the way that Chris Jones caught up some time on Martin Hoopman, definitely taking a, a better route into control number 14, clawing back a lot of time there, and then seems to be quicker just through the final through contr few controls. Putting Cat Taylor in contention to chase down uh, Judith Vida. So here we have confirmation of the standings at the exchange three. Sweden lead Denmark by 12 seconds, Switzerland 30 seconds adrift, Great Britain in fourth place, Spain in fifth, France, Finland, Russia, Czech Republic, and Norway in the top 10, a minute and a half, or thereby just adrift. And this is a replay of the fourth leg runners going out at the beginning. All running the 180 meters before the, to the start kite, before all going the, almost the same routes there. Although Judith Feeder taking the decision to go up the hill at an earlier point, all the other runners sticking quite close to the bottom before heading up the big wide path that's going to lead them almost directly into to control number one. It's interesting to note, though, that uh, Daniel Hoodman, of course, the uh, medalist from yesterday, not running in the Swiss team. They're presumably resting him for other races later this week. There's a lot of running to be done before the end of the week. Here's uh, Magia Alm. And we'll see when they come together. We need them to come uh, a bit closer here the time. The but Maya Alm has already taken some time out of Helena Janssen. Alm is just so quick. And, and Janssen may not be the, the quickest. She's probably the one to be able to handle the pressure of going out on last leg the best. But mm, I feel she might drop a few places. And Vida's gap is now 19 seconds. Janssen at eight seconds adrift. And we're just waiting to see if we get the split for the British team. Coming That's through. Taylor. That's Kat Taylor. So that gives her 34 seconds. So she's... Uh, Quite a bit behind Vida yet to catch up, but uh, that could all shake down in the rest of the race because uh, still a good distance to go. Kat Taylor's more used to running on uh, the long distance. She prefers the longer distance races, and we'll certainly see her in action later on this week. But seems to be going fairly well in the sprint so far. Of course, some of the GPSs, you have to allow them for being a bit out when they um, go through some of the buildings. It's not quite as accurate as we'd like to see on the map, but um, we'll take what we can get to see where the leaders are going in between our, our television points. As I think we see one of the Australian runners <laughs> accidentally <laughs> running into the finish. Yeah, um, he's, had to, us. he's had to spool back and head back to hand over his map. But here we have Al. Just uh, striding out there. Beautiful running style. I should note that Chris Jones brought the British team from up from 10th into 4th place on that leg, so a great result from the uh, World University's gold medalist. Certainly much more to come from him. And Janssen has lost more time. She's dropped into 3rd place behind Judith Vida. Well, she seems to be slowing, actually, whether she's had a problem, an injury or something. It just looks as if she's uh, lost a bit of the pace there. No question of that up front, though, because Maya Alm is uh, proving to be the person to beat at the moment. And Denmark, she's got nine seconds. Judith Feeder is catching up Maya Alm. 
but control by control. She'll soon have her in her sights. She's winding her in. The question is, is Alm saving something for the finish? She seems to be going steadily, but she will probably sense the arrival of Vida. And this is one of the crucial controls, choosing, choosing which side to go over this area of, um, of open rock. It looks like um, Alm's chosen to go the left-hand route, the eastern route, as you'd see it on the map. Uh, but I think the quickest one possibly is going straight through the middle, but she looks very, very smooth going through, and it's, it's a lot of easier running to do this way. Just the crowd round about us absolutely transfixed. There's the gap, nine seconds there, transfixed to the big screen above us here. Janssen in uh, third place, 18 seconds, 31 seconds to Kath Taylor. Yeah, Kat Taylor has brought up um, three seconds from the last split on the lead of Maya Alm. But they're still, all four of them are still way ahead of the lead of Finland and um, the Czech Republic now. The Czech, Rep Czech team have caught up a few places. They were down in the earlier moments of this sprint. It's quite a significant gap between the first four and the rest. It's really boiling up to that conclusion. The medals will be shared between these four teams. It's just a question of whether Britain taking a, it's a replay of the uh, different route across the top. Yeah, all of them are taken uh, the eastern route, apart from Kat Taylor, who I think it could possibly be the quickest route for her. But now she's got to get into control number six, and that's actually coming a long way from the west to get to that control. But still looks like she's brought, caught up some time on uh, Helena Janssen as she passes her there. We'll have seen that she's caught up some time on the, the team that were winning when she was put, uh, handed over. Here's Al. We might get an indication here of uh, how the gap is, because there's our nearest challenger. That's Vida. They'll have crossed. She saw where she was, so she knows exactly what she has to do to get back on terms. The bells are ringing in the arena. Alm being very careful coming down to that control, checks her light, makes sure that she registered. Now, the gap was at nine seconds of the last split, and it's nine again. Nine so again. not caught up any time from the last split that we've got. The New Zealand runner in front of us has made the same mistake as the Australian, and there's uh, Alm passing us for the first time. The next time she comes back, she'll take this route into the finish. The question is, will that gap still be the same? As they head off again, and we out into not so much the country, but this beautiful city. And now we've had Helena Janssen through. She should be coming through. Thir About 36 seconds down. 36 seconds. So that gap is going to be very difficult to close and she looks like she's toiling as she passes us to be perfectly honest and taylor's lost some time on the leaders as well and on jansen she's uh, drifting backwards at the moment the third place and the fourth place runners finding it very difficult to keep up the pace <coughs> this is cat taylor can we see where cat taylor us. lost some of the time both Helen Janssen and Kurt Taylor lost some time between controls five and controls eight and nine here. And again, <laughs> the lower order runners are having a, a oh real, dear me. real difficulty. Oh dear me, Kat Taylor going to the wrong control, almost going to the other control number six, completely going down one of the roads and having to turn the way back. That's where she's lost some of the seconds. Well, that may very well have cost her any chance of a place in the medal positions, but uh, we'll see whether she can pick it up. She's long since passed us here, following them away out into the far end of the arena. But they've still got a, the top four have still got a good lead over um, Vinogradova in, in, sec, in the chasing group. There they uh, see now the different routes that uh, they're taking. This is Janssen. And round the trees. 
She doesn't look that comfortable to me. Well, she's getting a big support from our locals, and there seems to be what's gone wrong there. Just seems as if something might have happened in the trees. They're all running. I'm not quite sure what that was, but we'll pick it up. Again, they've all taken a similar route, but possibly, well, Maya Alm's got the downhill route. She looks like she's sprinting away from Judith Vida, but Vida's got to the top of the hill now on control number 11, so can probably still see the figure of Maya Alm to chase. Only a few controls left now. We've passed the 50-minute mark, and uh, just there the sense that uh, the pace is, is something too much for the uh, Swedish runner at the moment, but here's Maja Alm. No sense at all of her relentless pursuit of this medal. And here we'll have an indication of the gap. Mm, here like she the comes. Gap's grown, I think. Here she comes. That looks as if it's opening, that gap. It's a gap of 12, 12 seconds. 12 seconds now, that is. She's eke eking it out. But Kat Taylor still has a lot of running to do. She's able to catch up the Swede. Elena Janssen certainly looked to be toiling in that last stretch when we saw her, but whether Kat Taylor can make up the ground. Don't immediately see any prospect of her doing that because it's such a significant gap. Here's Janssen now. And that's a gap of 48 seconds behind the time of Maya Alm, who punches one of the last controls before heading into the arena. Well, I have to say, she looks unbeatable because uh, she can sense the finish now. And look at how she's lifted the pace. Her stride is significantly stronger, makes absolutely certain that she's clocked in there. And here her teammates are waiting for her. Kleisner to Elassen, Bobach. She, she knows, made. she knows she's won it. It's two gold medals for Maya Alm in 24 hours as Denmark take the sprint relay at the 2016 Nokian Tires World Championship in Stromstad. And, and here two more gold medals for Maya Alm, chased down by Judith Vida, couldn't quite do enough. She was catching her at the beginning part of her leg, but not quite enough in the end. First and second yesterday, first and second on the finishing leg today. It's still a silver medal. It's 16 seconds, the winning margin. But can Sweden hang on for the bronze medal? Let's have a look. That's We're the question that will be on everyone's mind at the moment. Just waiting for and the... it looks like they can. Here they come. Helena Janssen comes and punches one of the last controls. Helena Janssen of Sweden. Sweden are going to take the bronze medal. Her team colleagues are with her as they come to the finish, making sure she gets there. And that's a good, strong run. She looked like she was struggling at some points, but she's made it safely home in third place. And now we're just waiting to see and Great Britain come into the stadium now. It's going to be a fourth place for Great Britain. Kat Taylor steadily coming into the arena. That's been a good run by Jones who brought Britain up. She's just checking behind her, make sure that she's safe. And here she is being followed, but she's safe enough because that's a runner in the lower order. But here's the uh, fifth place, so a minute and 40 adrift, Great Britain. Followed and Chris in. Jones on there to congratulate her. Followed, Followed by Galina Vinogradova from Russia. And then uh, last year's runners-up, the Norwegians, coming in in sixth place. So, there we have the main positions. The podium positions have sorted. Kath Taylor. And the celebrating Swiss team. They seem happy, I think, given the circumstances. They've acquitted themselves well over the two days. Yeah. They've picked up another bunch of medals. 
Yeah, yeah we may have had, I think we have them in our commentary box here. Maybe as favorites for this race, they had some great medals from yesterday, but not quite their top top team as from the medalist from yesterday. Trying to make sure that they've got some fresh legs in there. Also trying to rest some people. You, you remember this, this competition is five races. They've got to think about that as well and putting the right people on at the right time. But this is Leo Virtualotti from France coming in to take ninth place. So no surprise really that uh, Denmark, Switzerland and Sweden were in the top three. They've been dominating the World Cup, the European Championships. The Russians, there are question marks over just exactly what happens there. Uh, we have them in fifth place and they had a good finish between uh, number 15 and number and, uh, nine. The Austrian so runner, number nine, just not quite making it. And Ivali Kasiku from Estonia sees our team safely home. Followed by number 11 there is the Polish runner Hornik. It was an impressive run from Galina Vinogradova, the fourth place athlete from yesterday, who managed to uh, be the, become uh, the one on top at the end of that scrap for fifth place. Of course, the first four runners were pretty much clear, but there were a group battling for fifth, and Galina Vinogradova for Russia was the one who was able to win out on that little race. So here's a replay of... Uh, this is what this. happened when Maya Alm overtook Helena Janssen and just faster on the running there. Nothing to do with problems or to do with route choice particularly. Maya Alm just the quicker of the two. We know her individual speed from yesterday's gold medal and now she's added another gold from her collection, retaining her world championship title for a second time. And just looks to be in a different class, really. Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> she's she's just got that speed and and was able to maintain the lead. It was threat. It was threatened by Judith Vida. We mustn't forget that Judith Vida caught up a lot, particularly at the beginning of the race, and was fairly close uh, to Alm here. But Maya just had the speed over all of it. Over the last part of the race to get away. Maybe their slightly different uh, gaff along control number 10 uh, benefited the Danish runner more than the Swiss, but overall, my arm just had that speed. And you mentioned Soren Bobach, the third leg runner, always, always a steady runner. Conservative in his, in his decision making, but absolutely certain that he's going to maintain the position they've got at that stage in the race. He's got a strong navigational background. He knows he's going to make the right decisions. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily describe his choices as conservative, but they are solid because he is an exceptional navigator. There's the result as we have it at the moment. Denmark, Switzerland and Sweden in the three medal positions. Great Britain, one minute and 40 seconds in fourth place. Russia, who were in and out of the competition at one point. Norway, Czech Republic, Finland, France and the top ten made up by the Estonian team who are nearly three and a half minutes off the pace and then the gap obviously becomes much bigger. France way down in ninth there. Estonia, Austria, Poland, Lithuania, Ukraine, Spain might, we might have expected Spain to do just a little bit better. But this is how the race was won and lost. It was a good start, a comfortable start. We didn't have any chaos. We thought we might have had a bit of bunching. And then the early stages, it soon became obvious how the race was going to pan out, Catherine. It did indeed. We can see uh, the Swedes and the Danes. The top three were pretty much maintained, the top three throughout the whole thing. We were expecting Sweden, Switzerland and Denmark to be in the top three, I think they were definitely the favourites, but what order they would finish, it was more uncertain. Just would, would turn out to what happened on the day. Who had the legs to make it? As we see someone <laughs> struggle with the map changeover, that was Ukraine yeah. there. And then this is looking at the figure of Soren Bobak, who was caught up by Jonas B. Anderson. We thought that the Swedes might have had a shout at the gold medal, but it wasn't quite to be as she was, as uh, Helena Janssen was run out by some incredibly, incredibly fast athletes. But once uh, Alm got ahead, I don't think there was any real doubt, was there? Although the race was competitive in itself, there was never any real doubt about where the gold medal was going. No, 
She was challenged a bit by Judith Feeder, but we know from her result, her, her commanding win from yesterday, 25 seconds, that she was almost unbeatable. It would, we, as long as she had recovered well and, and kept her head together, knowing she was out in the front, which, you know, she's got absolutely great form and, and great composure, and that really showed from her ability to bring it home with a gold medal. Well, they'll be extremely pleased, obviously, the Danish team. And these are the magnificent scenes in the harbour area as the uh, assembled crowd welcome home the uh, finishing runner. Some of them a good way off actually finishing at the moment. The Irish runner there still. The Irish team have a long, long way to go before they finish. But the crowd sense of anticipation building up for the flower ceremony and the podium the six top places will get the flowers and the three medal positions will be fated you also see turkey and, and hong kong go through they've got their final little bit of the course to go before they make their way into the finish area it has been quite a triumphant performance by the Danish team. There, the Swiss team, second place, go to their position. It's just the three medal positions we have for the flower ceremony here. And I have to say, all three teams look fresh enough. They look as if they could uh, all go out again particularly Maya Alm. We always comment on her fitness. All the runners, I think, still catching up on how their races went. They haven't really had a time to debrief, congratulate each other, find out how all their runs went as they would have been waiting behind the scenes after having downloaded to see what the rest of their team was going to do. This is the moment they were all waiting for. And then we start in third place. Third place to the home team. A big response for them. I'm sure they're disappointed they never quite had enough to get to the gold medal position. But it was a good performance nonetheless. They made sure of their position. The New Zealand runner just passing us now. It's the la lower order runner still coming in as the prizes are being handed out. The glorious conditions here this evening. The crowd are heading for their various celebrations all around the town. And the second place award now. Silver medal to Switzerland. Rahel Friedrich, Florian Howald, Martin Hubman, and Judith Wieder, who had just storming run in the latter stages. Very pleased with herself, and quite rightly so. Because they gave it everything, and they made it a good race. from the whole team. The Swiss team get a lot of support wherever they go. And a load of Swiss flags can be seen from wave, being waved from the spectators here in the arena. Great atmosphere. And next we turn to a team that, that hasn't changed over the past two major competitions. They were the same team in the World Cup. They were the same where they got third. They were the same team in the Europeans where they became second and then third time lucky. It is Team Denmark. 
Team Denmark are the champions, the world champions at the 2016 Nokian Tires World Championships here in Stromstad and worthy winners of the uh, championship. A double gold medal winning performance for Maya Alm there who took the sprint yesterday and has come back and picked up another gold medal this afternoon leading our team home in the fourth leg Cecile Freberia Kleisner, Tue Lassen, Soren Bobach, Maya Alm the week is by no means done because uh, plenty of running to be done in these championships So there we have it, Denmark are the world champions and that brings our transmission from the uh, IOF Live Centre today almost to a close. Catherine and I will be back on Tuesday, confirmation there of the first three places, Denmark, Switzerland and Sweden. We'll be back on Tuesday from Tannum and the middle distance race, but for now, bye bye.